last week we announced we did a live sale so that's right that we had matter. fun and everybody claimed their items good good yep. good um but the big news was we announced the next so long that's right yes and yes oh i'm it's all coming back look to me. behind you jada well this weekend i made another one the black and white in the buffalo uh check here so and popular right now yeah i yes. know and um as a matter of fact the kid that i made it for gave me a hard time because he said i should have been smart enough to get the red and black check too well he has a point <laughs> so anyways i try to get a little something for everybody and but that one just worked out so well and i did it in the view c so i want to talk a little bit about the view a b versus the view c just because last week's newsletter at the last minute we flipped the pictures but we didn't flip Forgot the, to flip the caption. The captions. And so it said that the hooded version was view A, and it clearly is not. It's view C. So please be careful when you place your order. And if you misunderstood, let me know so we can fix that for you. But um, clearly, view C is the hood. And you'll get enough fabric in view C kit to make the hood out of the flannel. So then you have the option, you could always do it out of sweatshirt fleece if you prefer, but it's kind of the thing right now to do it out of the flannel. So that's what we thought we would do with the kits. So again, that's C for the hood, A, B with the collar. Oh, and the other thing is, we have two fabrics that are part of the kit that are back ordered, but they'll be in this week. So if you ordered the cappuccino, which was that black and gray and brown one that I showed last week, um, that fabric sold really fast. So we have a lot more of that coming in. And the Blue Night Brushed Cotton, the solid uh, navy blue. Yeah, that will be in in a day or two as well. So we'll be able to get your orders out as soon as they arrive. I think that's it for my housekeeping. Okay, I just put a comment. There's uh, two people saying that they're getting like a waiting for a live video signal message. So I don't know if they can actually hear us or not. So I put it in the comments. Um, I'm not showing an issue on our end. Um, so refresh, there was a, a glitch at when I first went live. So you might be stuck there. Refresh the page um, that you are on and see if that helps you. And then again, I put it in the comments because I don't know if that means they are hearing nothing from us or... Right. It is, there are some... How do you know that that's happening? Uh, they told me in the comments. So in the comments, they can see a stagnant picture, but in here, Mom, nothing. I don't know what oh, they can see. Okay. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> okay. Um, my eyes are not their eyes. My eyes are my eyes. Um. Okay. So there's lots of kits on the website for that. We yeah, lots of options, okay. lots of options. Some, most are flannel, but we also have some brush cottons and some twills, and we'll talk about fabrics in a few minutes. Yes, if you saw um, the topic or the caption or whatever um, of this video, I did say we're going to talk about fabrics, um, and that fabric type is not fiber content that is correct and it's very important so janet's going to go over a lot of different fabrics all ones that we have here in stock but more so just to show you what they are and what they might be good for uh yeah and better to understand um, <laughs> to help you better understand what's going on what is it well, something's funny 
I noticed this when you were like, what, can they see this? Can they see this? I was like, mom, I don't know what they can see. I was like, oh, I said mom. Because you get a lot of people that say, <laughs> why don't you call her that? And um, Jean said, I didn't know you were a mother and daughter. Oh, see, I get it. She gets to be just right. Um, Jessica has worked in my businesses, three of them now, since she was probably 16 or 17 years old. And we made a point when I worked with my Aunt Margaret and I worked in her business for quite a few years that during business transactions or business events, we uh, spoke to each other by first name. But the rest of the time, it doesn't, it doesn't, that never carries over into private life. It's just like this one hour that we're here or if we're at an expo or a teaching event. Otherwise, she calls me mom. Yes. It's weird because I came come for the same place to work as I might on the weekend <laughs> to watch a football game, but it's a completely different. Well, a different yeah. part of the building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, sorry. Off topic as usual. But that clears that up because we do get comments about that. But somebody caught that. That's funny. I caught it when it came out of my mouth, but... Oh. Um, <laughs> I didn't... Okay, Pam wants to know, if you're going to construct these shirts out of fleece, I assume she means the easy shirt, um, to wear indoors as a shirt, would you make a larger size because the fabric is heavy? Well, I would not conduct, a, I would not construct a shirt of this type out of fleece. I just wouldn't do it. But the answer to your question is yes. And then I gave you the answer to the question you didn't ask. Um, that's why we're using flannel. Flannel is warm, but it is also breathable because it's made from, this particular flannel is made from 100% cotton. Uh, fleece is not, it's polyester and is not breathable. So it's generally saved for outdoor weather because that's when you want protect yourself from the extreme weather or the wind or whatever. But indoors, it can be too warm. But if, you know, if it's not for you, I would cut back on a few of the details. I think you're going to have a heck of a time. You must be doing view C. Um, you'll still have trouble with, you may have trouble with the sleeve placket and the cuff out of fleece. It's just... Um, not as workable and foldable. And when you go to put a cuff on, you've got one, two, three, four, six layers of fabric that you're trying to top stitch through. So figure six layers of fleece. It's, it's a bugger. It can be done, but I don't think it'll be as much fun. Okay. I'm just trying to look something up. I'm sorry. Okay. So, um, did we ever hear from people? Were they? Did they get things straightened out when they refreshed? You don't know. No, they. Some people did not. Hmm. That's odd. Technology baffles me. I had to call um, the cable company the other day to have one of, I had gotten a new router that has more options for controlling uh, basically children and how, what hours and how long they can be on it. And so I had to have the one from the cable company disconnected. But then she started asking me questions I couldn't answer. The IT guy said, just call and tell him to do this. So I did. And then it went really bad because I'm like, I'm technologically challenged when it comes to routers and modems and internet speed. So, um, yeah. So I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Okay, some people say that it's fine, and some people say that it's pausing, and I show a decent connection on our end, so. 
Well, if you have... Oh, there's multiple people saying that they are getting the message on their iPad. Oh. So if you have an iPad, maybe that might be prob part of the problem. Hmm. All right. So do we want to get into our first type of fabric? Let's, uh, yeah, let's go. I'll go on the other side of the room and we'll... You're going to the other side. Yeah. Okay. That's what I had intended. That's why I didn't understand your... You'd never voiced that part of it. But that's fine. I'll mm. just turn it around. It's no big deal. Okay. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. You might want to push that cord. Just push it over this. It won't. Oh, then Unless you Unless this is hanging down. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Now your confusion earlier makes sense. <laughs> I thought it was just your normal confusion. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait another 10 years. <laughs> All right. Yeah, wait. Good times. <laughs> okay. So... You know, I really love my Tuesdays at 2. I really do because I can be spontaneous and I can present the information that I think is the most pertinent. And how I make those decisions is by the questions that you send me. So when I hear questions here on Tuesdays at 2 or I get emails or Facebook messages that um, let me know that there is some information needed on certain topics and I feel like if I get enough questions that there's a lot of people that could benefit from the information so that's what today's lecture or discussion or whatever is all about so the thing that I find and I find people who have been sewing for 30 40 years still are not clear about the difference between fabric type and fiber content. They are completely different things. So I'm gonna go into that and I think by the time I get done here with my little um, demo, it'll make more sense for those of you who are a little baffled. So, so for instance, we can't generalize a fabric because not all wools are itchy, not all linens wrinkle, not all cottons are suitable for garments, and not all knits curl. It, they're not all the same. There's different ways of weaving and knitting fabrics, and there's different fiber content that could be called the same fabric. So I'm going to go through a few of these, and when Jess gets back, you know, oh, here she comes, we're going to take questions. So I wanted to start out with the first fabric, I'm going to start out with wovens and then we'll move on to knits in a few minutes. So hold your knit questions if you have any. But for example here, and I'm going to have Jessica do a close up on the weave structure of this fabric. So there are a lot of different weave structures. So when fabric is woven, as you probably all know, there's a warp and a weft. There's a, they put threads on the loom the lengthwise, which is the straight of the grain or the length of the grain, and then they weave back and forth across those threads to create the fabric or the textile. So the three basics are, oh good, one of them just slipped my mind. But they're, they're the two, the first two, one is satin, they are just basic straight up and down, back and forth across. But what you see here is a twill fabric. And the weave of a twill creates the look of a diagonal. And I think you can really see it in the white stripe. So it creates kind of a 45 degree angle diagonal weave. What does that do for the properties of this fabric? Now this is 100% cotton twill. But twill does not have to be cotton. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is you don't go into the fabric store and you say, well, I want twill because you may get some polyester. You may get all kinds of other fibers in there and you really want it 100% cotton. So just know that twill is the type. And in this particular case, cotton 
is the fiber content. So this is a beautiful shirting, and I got three of these this year. Um, two, one, another one that's kind of a, ooh, a beautiful teal color that's a similar pattern to this plaid. And then also a black and white twill that is brushed. Oh, it is gorgeous. It's a large plaid. You'll see it on the website. But what's the nicest part of the property of a twill is that it has a little bit of give, a little bit of ease, and so it drapes really nicely. Now, you might say to me, but Janet, blue jeans are twill weave, and they don't drape. Well, no, because the fiber yarns that are used to create denim are much heavier. So that kind of inhibits that nice drape, but it doesn't inhibit the give. So for those of you who are in my age bracket and you remember when denim didn't have any lycra in it, it, it still stretched. It still gave because, and that's why it was originally used by Levi Strauss, is because it didn't always tear when you had to put some stretch on it or some stress. So that's what twill is all good about. And so for jeans, it's so that it gives a little bit instead of rips. But for things like this shirting, it just adds this excellent drape. And a good dressmaker, tailor, can tell the difference in somebody's wearing a shirt. And you will be able to one day, too, if you use this fabric. You can see that it just has, it's not all loose and sloppy drape. It's just a nice drape. So that is twill. Um, I'm going to move on unless you holler for questions, Jess. So then I wanted to talk about brushed cottons. And there's a couple of different types of brushed cottons. So this one is beautiful. And I have two plaids like this. They're a shirting weight. So they're not heavy at all. But they're brushed on one side. And when it's brushed on one side, it makes it soft on that side but it also makes it a little bit warmer. So these make great winter shirts. They just add, it's not like wearing uh, fleece. It's not going to heat you up or anything. It's just a little bit warmer. Like I would wear uh, the brushed in the winter, and in the summer I'd wear my lawn because it's cooler. So that's what that's all about. So it's brushed on one side, and... Then flannel, and you know, that's what we're working with in our kits right now. So flannel is a little bit heavier. Now this is 100% cotton flannel. Not all flannels are cotton. Actually, the first flannels were all wool. And wool flannel is still out there, and it makes beautiful shirts. Beautiful shirts that last a lifetime. Uh, I don't carry any wool flannel at this time, but <clears throat> it is a fabulous fabric. But this is... Flannel. Not all flannels are created equal. Somebody asked last week, well, don't they all flannels shrink? No, they don't. These flannels don't shrink. Part of the issue is how they're processed and how, what the thread count is. So when you buy a higher quality flannel like this particular brand that we're carrying, you have um, less or no shrinkage. And a couple of weeks ago, we did the newsletter, and I showed you how to test it. But I've tested these uh, that we're carrying right now, and they did not shrink. And you can see that in the newsletter. I cut a 4-inch square out. I got it really good, almost hot water, good and soaked, put it through a dryer. And it came out and it set right back smack into that spot without a hair missing. So these are fabulous. But what the difference between a brush cotton... And a flannel is flannel's even a little bit warmer because it's brushed on both sides. So it's softer, but it also makes it fluffier and a little bit warmer. But it still breathes because it's a natural fiber. Okay, then I want to talk about yarn dyed because everything I've shown you so far is considered yarn dyed. But that has nothing to do with the fiber content. It has everything to do with how the, you get the print on the fabric. And we've talked about this quite a few times. When you get a print fabric, especially quilters cotton, 
They start out with a white fabric and then they print with fabric uh, textile dyes and paints on the surface. That gives that fabric a stiffer drape or it may inhibit the drape. But when you use a yarn dyed, the stripe or plaid that you see in a yarn dyed is because it has been woven that way. So in other words, the yarns or the threads that they weave this fabric with are all dyed in advance and then they're woven to create the stripe or the plaid. What's beautiful about that is these fabrics hold their color a lot longer because the fiber has been dyed, not just sit on top. So it's completely part of the fabric. The other great thing is, is that when you flip them over, they look the same or almost some of them, depending on the weave structure, might look slightly different on the back. But for the most part, they look exactly the same front and back. And I'd say this one looks exactly the same. And it has, you need to zoom in on this too. No, take it back. Oh, okay. To see this fine little check that's in this stripe right here that's outlined by the red. This is what I love about beautiful shirting. Some of the fine detail can only be appreciated up close. But this will have a beautiful drape. It will hold the color much longer than a printed fabric. You can use the stripes as your straight to grain, as your center front. You can line things up to cut your cuffs or whatever you're cutting, um, knowing that you're going to be on the straight of the grain because the woven grain is the stripe, is the yarn. So that's what yarn dyed means as opposed to printed fabric, and that's the reason yarn dyes are a little more desirable, longer lasting, color stays brighter, and I just love them for cutting because they make cutting so much easier. Okay, let me see what else I might have on here. <coughs> well, I think I covered everything for woven so far. But again, knowing that, you know, this is, uh, we have a twill. But twills are not all cotton. Twills are not all anything. You can get a silk twill. <coughs> I'm going to need to get a drink. I need some water. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. And again, all flannels aren't cotton, some are wool. All flannels are not the same quality. So many people shy away from flannels because their only experience is with a lesser quality. And that's only because that's all that's available at your local store. I talked to a woman in Oklahoma today, and she says she doesn't have a fabric store. All she has is Hobby Lobby, uh, places like that. Well, they carry very small amounts of fabric and they carry less expensive fabrics for impulse shopping. So that would be maybe the flannel that you had used. It'd be a lesser thread count, a lower quality, and then when you wash it, it shrunk a lot and it lost its shape. That's what happens to those less expensive flannels. They really, really lose their shape after a wash or two. And then, also inexpensive fabrics, pill really fast. A good quality fabric like this will never pill. It should never pill unless it's really, really um, distressed in some way. A lot of abrasion for some reason. Okay. So, I want to move on to knits now. And we're going to start with double knits. So what is a double knit versus a single knit or a jersey? There's so many different types of knits. And oftentimes I get the questions, you know, well, can you teach me how to sew with knits? Well, there's lots of different knits. That's just like saying, can you teach me how to sew clothes? There's lots of different techniques and garments. So you have to know that to begin with. So I'm going to give you some of the basic properties of general knits. So a ponte is a double knit. Now they used to uh, not be ponte. Ponte is a relatively new fabric to the sewing market, but it has, it still has a drape to it, a little bit of a drape. And can they see me at all? Because mm -hmm. I can't, uh, yeah. you flip the thing. Um, 
it's it's a beautiful fabric, but it makes a great pant or skirt uh, jacket. And you can use double knits and pantes where you might have used wovens. You really have to think it through, but these are far more stable. Notice there's no curling of any kind. And it's beautiful on both sides because it's double knit, which means there's two sets of needles. It's being knit from both sides. So it actually makes it beautiful on both sides. And it gives us this wonderful body that doesn't curl or distort at all. And that's Ponte, and Ponte is one of the double knits. And again, any knit can have a multitude of fibers. It could be a silk knit, a linen knit, a rayon knit, um, polyester knits. What you see the most in your smaller stores or your box stores is going to be the uh, poly knits and likely the rayon knits. So, which brings me right over to um, the jerseys. Now, what I'm wearing is a jersey, and I just happen to have a bolt of this here. And funny thing is, please don't shoot me, but I know somebody wrote me the other day and said, boy, I really wish you still had that fabric. And I thought to myself, well, I have a bolt of that fabric. Why does this person think I don't have this? Well, for some reason, our inventory got messed up. I don't know what happened, but it was marked sold out on the website. So I fixed that. But this is a bamboo knit. And you all that have been uh, loyal fans here know how much I love the bamboo knits. <clears throat> they have a beautiful drape. Bamboo is just another form of a rayon. So there's lots of rayons out there. There's modal. There's micromodal. There is um, bamboo rayon. And basically rayon is made from pulp. So like wood pulp. And we know what bamboo is, it's those shoots. So same thing, it's just not a tree. Well, I guess it could be a tree if it grew long enough. But it's it, the pulp of the bamboo is what makes this beautiful, beautiful fabric. So you might have a bamboo rayon knit, which doesn't mean bamboo and rayon. It means the rayon is made from bamboo. Or you might have a rayon knit. And rayon knits are beautiful too. Uh, we're carrying quite a few of them. I didn't bring one up here to the table. No. Um, but <clears throat> rayon and bamboo rayon uh, give you similar properties and very nice, comfortable knits to wear. They do curl on the edge a bit, as opposed to a ponte. Before you move on to the next, Mary has a question about she says, maybe I missed it, but what makes a double knit a ponte? Oh, that's a good question. I, they're really, I really don't have an answer for her. I really don't have an answer. Like I said, ponte is relatively new to me. And, I mean, I've been carrying it for a couple of years, and I love it for slacks. But I'd have to do some research, and I'll get back to you. To find out why that makes it different. I think it has a smoother surface. But I'll need to. I'll need to find out. Anything else? Alright. So the, these, this is what we're talking about. Like with the polka dot. And the other rayons. Uh, ba our bamboos. Knits. Those are jersey. And a jersey is a single knit. So there's only one set of needles. It's only being knit from one side. Um, it's stretchy and it has and it's soft and it has a natural elasticity because it was knit. Anybody who's ever knit or even crocheted knows what happens. The fabric is very uh, flexible and it's not the actual yarn. It's how the yarns are put together. And knitting would be that. Um, Sophie's asking, is rayon hotter to wear than cotton? No. It's a natural fiber. All natural fibers are about the same. So when we're talking natural fibers, we're talking about anything that's created by nature. So that's cotton because it's grown on a plant. 
It's uh, any rayon because we just talked about it. it's different wood pulps, plant pulps. And then silk. Silk is created by a worm that, that well, it's actually, uh, yeah, it spins that, it's cocoon. And actually silk threads are cocoons unwound that silk worms make to become the little moss. So, um, what else? Silk, rayon, wool. Wool is the other natural fiber, and they get wool by shearing sheep. So they shear sheep and they card the wool and they get it all cleaned and smoothed out and then they spin it into yarns, thin or thick yarns. Um, Linda asks, what fabric content in the Ponte wouldn't stretch out at the knees as you wear it? Is there a natural fiber in Ponte? Well, um, <clears throat> No, it's basically rayon or rayon blends, and it doesn't stretch out. You know, we don't have the problem we used to have. You know what stretched out at the knees all the time? Because back in the 80s, late 80s, I was making a lot of hand-dyed garments out of knits, and they were cotton knits because we didn't have some of the more advanced knits at that time. And I would make these beautiful leggings and these big oversized tops, and we we hand dyed them and everything. But the leggings, I had like three or four pair because after five or six hours, yeah, they would start to stretch out in places, bag in the knees, maybe bag a little bit in the buns, and you certainly couldn't wear them a second day because they'd stretched out. So now with the lycra that's been put into all of these different products, that small amount of Lycra, that has memory. And so it comes back to where it was. And you'd find that with this beautiful Ponte. Oh, and you know what I didn't mention is this Ponte, I carry it in a gray, which is called Princeton Gray, I think, and a black, and really sharp black. And they are both made by that company I talked to you about that um, creates all their fabrics in the United States. So it's a USA product. And what is the content of it? I don't have it in front of me, but I'll get it for you in a minute. Is it on the website? Is it on our website? It should be. I, I'm guessing 97%, but you, you look. All right. Um, all right. So the next knit is like Jersey, but it has a, a separate quality that Jersey doesn't have, and that is... It creates loops on the wrong side. So a jersey is smooth on both sides. And sometimes you have a hard time telling the right from the wrong side. But with um, a French terry, you get the same drape and loose uh, fall of the fabric. But it's got this wonderful loop on the other side. You look like you might have another question. Uh, no, I was just going to tell Claudia the fiber content of that Ponte is 60 rayon, 33 nylon, 7 spandex. I'm glad you did that because I was going to say 97% and mm -hmm. I, yeah, that was wrong. Okay, good. And it, it's hard to you say. You did have a 7. There is yeah, a 7 there's a in seven. there somewhere. So now this is a rayon or a bamboo uh, French terry and we have it in our luxury tea kits. And what you see is not a significant difference between the front and the back. And the loops are very small. But what those loops do when this is knit this way, it just gives it a little more body. So these have more body than just a plain jersey because of the way they've been knit. And you know it's a French terry if there's loopiness on the wrong side. Now, in this particular one, it's hard to even tell that it's there, but it is rough. In the micro-modal uh, French terry we have, and it's, and it's that extra black, you can't even tell. I mean, uh, especially a novice, I, I don't even think I would have known it was French terry, except for when I bought it at the market, it was marked. Because uh, it is micro-French terry, so... The yarns are extremely fine. But if you get a 
cotton French terry, here's what happens. You can tell the difference. The front. I don't front need to zoom in to show that, but no, I will. But this now shows you can the loops really better, see though. the loops. But what's fun about this, and I'm working on a project with this particular fabric right now, is that you can use the wrong side as a contrast and maybe flip out the collar or the cuffs or whatever in the wrong side to give it um, a little different look. Just a simple sweater and um, you have the cuffs and your collar out of the wrong side and of course the inside of the little sweater is going to have that look too so it all flows together really nicely but this would be a cotton french terry the difference in this particular cotton french terry it's a little bit uh it's not as drapey it's not as flexible and loose and stretchy because it's cotton and remember cotton doesn't have the memory that some of the other fabrics have just like I talked about those leggings I used to make they were beautiful but by the end of the night they were bagging <laughs> all right Celine has a question and I don't know I'm interested to see what you know on this okay she says could you talk about static electricity is there more is it more prevalent in certain fabrics and how can this be eliminated it is more prevalent in certain fabrics. Nylon is one of the worst. One of the worst. And again, I'm going to harken back to my age group. We used to wear slips under our dresses. And they were a lot of times a nylon or a nylon trico. And they would get static electricity and then everything would cling. You'd have to uh, use a fabric softener or use that spray stuff to get the cling out. I don't know of a particular way to eliminate it other than those two ways or to just avoid the fabrics that have that static cling. But nylon is definitely in that area and you can get it with polyester as well, but it's the synthetics. I'm not sure any natural fibers uh, have static electricity. I could be wrong, but in my experience, I haven't seen that. Back in the day, my parents had some carpet that was not, had a lot of high nylon content in it. And you got a shock every time you turn the light switch on or off or hit anything metal. So that's why I know nylon is a biggie on that. All right, I have one more knit that I want to talk about. And this is ITY. I love the colors in this one, and I called it abstract feathers. I swear, does it look like feathers to you, Jess? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what it is. It's a digital print, and they kind of, you know, kind of blew out the feathers to give them a more of an abstract look, which I really like that look. And uh, <clears throat> so this is ITY, and ITY is polyester. So keep that in mind. It does not breathe, but it ha But when you trade one property for another, you can get some really great benefits. What I like about ITY is its drapeability. It's very fluid, and the reason is is that ITY means interlock twisted yarns. So in other words, they are knitting this fabric, but they're putting a slight twist on the yarn as they knit it and then it gives it this springy fluidity which one of the other nice things about this it doesn't cling to the body like the jersey knits do so if you have a body conscious issue and you want it to skim the body but not suck into the body ITYs are perfect for that but they make beautiful t-shirts especially the lot of new t-shirts are what they call a swing t-shirt so they're a little bit looser as they come down instead of clinging to the body this would be perfect when we uh, introduced the five easy tees our whole collection was ITYs we loved that and it wasn't until just recently I found I think I came back from my last buying trip with four ITYs and I just put them on the website they're very bright colors 
but they're beautiful uh, for the winter time. And so again, these do have the curl on the edge. So they are gonna curl. Uh, but they, they're not the worst in curling, that's for sure. Not like some I've worked with. And they sew beautifully. And they don't wrinkle. So now you've got to travel. If you're going to go on a cruise this winter, you're doing any kind of traveling, these are things you can literally ball up. Put them in a suitcase, pull them out, and they're not wrinkled. They rinse out and drip dry pretty quickly too. So they make great travel garments. And that's ITY, Interlock Twisted Yarns. Just means when they're knitting it, they're twisting the yarn. Okay, now, another thing to keep in mind when you're wanting to purchase fabrics or learning a little bit more about purchasing just the right fabric is understanding the weight because every fabric has a weight so you can buy knits that the weight is like two ounces per square yard you can buy knits that are six 12 ounces per square yard which one do you want and is this going to be right for me so you need to start thinking about the weights so we put the weights on most of our fabrics especially if it's relevant and what it is, there'll be a measurement and then it'll say OSY. That means ounces per square yard, which they're starting to get away from, and I'll explain in a minute. If you're Canadian or European, it may be GSM, grams per square meter. So in other words, we'll go back to the yards. A square yard would be 36 by 36. Well, many, many years ago, fabric was pretty much woven 36 wide, but not anymore. It's 45, it's 57, it's 60. So it's kind of hard to figure that out weight-wise. So now some of the, I'm seeing on some of the sites that I'm buying from my wholesale sites, they're doing uh, ounces per linear yard. So if it's 60 inches wide, one yard would weigh this much. Once you have purchased a fabric at a certain weight, then you'll be able to identify from that point forward. Let's say that you go on a website and you say, I'm going to buy this as 2.9 ounce t-shirt fabric. I love that weight. I go on to another site and I see some knit and I want to make a t-shirt out of it, but it says it's 7 ounces. It's not going to have the same drape. It's not going to hang the same. It's going to be a much thicker fabric because it weighs to over twice as much for the same amount of fabric. So again, that's ounces per square yard or grams per square meter. And you'll see that on fabrics from time to time. Um, like I said, we try to put it on ours, especially if it's relevant. Okay. I feel like I'm done. Okay, while you're over there, I have a question not related to the fabric, but uh, Brenda is working on, she wants to lengthen her son's shirt, and she wants to know if you can review how to measure a man's arm length. Oh, I'd be glad to do that. I'll have to do it on you. Okay. Anything I, else? That's what I have on the fabric, but if anybody else has questions on the fabric, it's still just sitting here on the table, so feel free to throw them out there. Sophie wants to know, do they add lycra to fabric? Yes, that's what makes denim jeans stretchable. That's why all the jeans you get now stretch like crazy, because they've had lycra added to them. But it's important to note that you only need a little bit of lycra, and the amount of lycra will tell you the flexibility of the fabric. So if it's got 2% lycra, it's going to be just a little bit stretchy. If it's 8%, it's going to be a lot stretchier. You're not in the frame. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to stand up. Yeah. Okay, so on any of our patterns, we use the tailor's measure for the sleeve length. And it's the only accurate way. <clears throat> so many people would 
just well imagine that they'd come up to the shoulder, just put your arm down, and measure down, and they would say, let me get this to the right side. Okay, so they would say Jessica's 22-inch uh, sleeve length. But that's not her sleeve length because we don't know exactly where that uh, is going to hit. For some of our patterns, it's a dropped sleeve. Man, remember back in the 90s, it was dropped like two and a half inches. Now, we don't do that anymore, but not a lot of shirts are exactly up here. They're like maybe a half an inch, maybe three-fourths of an inch down. Or maybe you like yours right on, and if you're following our fitting, you're doing that for yourself. But because you're not sure, and if you're making a shirt for somebody else, and you don't want to keep trying it on them, um, this is the most accurate way. Now, Jessica's going to turn sideways. And I'm going to measure from right on her spine, the center, uh, just below her neck. I'm going to start there. I'm going to go across her shoulder. Then I'm going to ask her to put her arm up like this. Back up a little. And then I'm going to measure around the bent elbow and down to the wrist. Right at the wrist. And you're done. And that is 31 inches. So when people, get, sure. people get our patterns and they measure their arm and they go, something's wrong. There's no way people have 31 inch uh, uh, arms. It's not your arm length. This is a tailor's way of measuring and getting a very accurate quality fit. So um, that's what I highly recommend as far as measuring for sleeve length. Now, I don't know what pattern you're using. If you're using mine, that's the way it was measured. If you're using some other patterns, sometimes they know to do that, but most of the time they don't. So they're going to do the home sewing method or whatever. And in that case, I've always had to pin fit my sleeve. And it's very annoying because you can't cut your sleeve out while you're cutting out the rest of your garment. You've got to kind of pin it on, put, make the shell of the garment, then pin the sleeve on and make sure it's going to measure properly. And the reason we stop at the wrist is because we're probably going to have a two inch cuff. So when we put that two inch cuff on, we've just allowed for the two inch ease so we can bend our elbow and move your arm around. The other thing, the reason we measure across the back is because nobody has the same back. Some people's backs are extremely flat. Others are very muscular and some are just fluffier as Connie would say, or thicker. So you don't know how much stretch you need across here. And if you've ever purchased shirts for men, and you think, so here, try it on. The first thing they do when they try it on is this. <laughs> they do this. Because if they can't do this comfortably, they don't want to wear that shirt. So that's another reason we're measuring that way. So we make sure we get all of that length that's needed in there. Okay, I want to clarify. I think you still answered her question, but she didn't ask if they put, do they add lycra to fabric? She said, why do they add lycra to oh, fabric? Just so I wanted to clarify that for Sophie's, since that's what she actually asked. I read it wrong. But it, I still think you answered her question. Yeah. But if not, Sophie, write again, and I'll try to read better. <laughs> um, it's just for stretch, and you only need a little bit. And lycra is a brand. So it, you'll always see the little symbol by it and everything. It's a vague that's a proprietary brand yes linda wants to know are you for sure out of the black luxury bamboo french terry no i'm not out of it right. does she think i am why did she think i was i don't know let me see no i got a 30 yards of it right here i think that's it on the website <laughs> have we i wish brenda was here No, I got it right here. Extra Black Luxury Bamboo French Terry. Yeah, it's right here. And I got it on the website, and you got it here. She's touching it. She's touching it, Linda. I'm going to put the link right now for you. It is the most luxurious knit that I think we have. Not only is it a bamboo, rayon, 
so it breathes but because it's that micro French terry it just feels rich to wear um, Carolyn asks, if one knit stretches more than another, do you have to adjust the pattern to compensate? It depends on the style. So a lot of patterns on the back of the envelope, if it's for a knit, if it says this pattern's for a knit only, you may see on the back of the envelope a gauge. And the gauge goes from maybe this big and then there'll be another mark out here. So let's say this is three inches. You'll take three inches of your fabric and you'll stretch it to the outside mark. If it stretches to there comfortably, then that's the right knit for that pattern. If it'll stretch way beyond that, it's too stretchy. And if it won't make it, or it's too hard to pull it to that extra distance, then it's not the right knit for that particular garment. It does say out of stock. <sighs> All right, we'll fix it. Oh, she's gonna go right I now. I can't, I'm not, I'm not up. Um, <laughs> Well, that makes sense. As soon as we get off the live, we'll fix it. It must have been when we got the dot and that one in, we didn't update our inventory. And I apologize for that, but I will get that on there within a few minutes of... Uh... On that note, we need to go. <laughs> um, Sophie has a follow-up question on the Lycra. Is there a downside to using a fabric that has Lycra added to it? I can't think of one. It's a fabulous invention of the of the last century, the end of the last century. I keep forgetting we're in a whole new century. But um, no. Where am I? Because it has that memory that we didn't have back in the 70s when we were started working with knits. We didn't have any memory. Once you stretched it out, once you sat in it or uh, bent down and were on your knees for a few minutes, you got up and everything bagged out. So that's what your Lycra does. It adds memory. So everything goes back to where it was supposed to. So it makes, uh, you know, great for um, athleisure wear. Mm -hmm. Anything stretchy. Anything Make stretchy. Make everything stretchy. <laughs> we like stretchy. <sighs> okay, so I think that catches me up on the questions. Okay. All right. And Brenda was asking that about the arm, how to measure the uh -huh. arm for the sew along. So it's your pattern. She's all set now. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So if you're making, like we had suggested, some of this new uh, sew along and you're going to make them for uh, holiday gifts, yeah, get, get those measurements ready. Get yourself ready because the basic measurement you need for a man is his neck and his uh, sleeve length. Um, sure, you want to know pretty much the chest or whatever, and unless he's got a really large barrel body, everything else just seems to fall because they don't have the patterns that are contoured to go in and out. They're just, it's just a straight shirt, and it's uh, loose fitting, and always remember to look at the finished garment measurements. You can always, if you're trying to surprise somebody, you can always compare those to a finished shirt, remembering uh, you know, whatever differences there might be. But the beauty is when you're making a shirt, like with Brenda's, the one that she made for her son, he's very tall. He's at least six foot. I think he's over six foot. So she's able to lengthen it and lengthen the sleeves. And that's really hard in sports shirts. When you go to dress shirts, you, they're measured, you buy them by the sleeve length and the neck measurement. That's it. And, but when you go to buy a sports shirt that comes in small, medium, large, extra large, that the sleeve length is just a general sleeve length, take it or leave it. So it's nice to, for people with, that are taller and have longer arms, it's nice for them to finally have a shirt that actually. Yeah, she says he's a big boy. She needs to make the 3X. Okay. All right. All right. He's going to be so happy, Brenda. Yeah. Um, Liz. Oh, no, Kim. Sorry. Uh, Kim, Kim is asking what your thoughts are on using knit fabric for a jacket, jacket that's drafted as a woven. Well, the only knit I would use for that is a stable knit, which would be like a ponte or a double knit. Um, you can do it. Um, just be cautious. You know, 
it's hard for me always to answer the question because I don't know the people I'm talking to expertise or experience. Mm -hmm. So if you're a beginner, I'm going to say to you, maybe you want to test that fabric out and try a couple things that you think would be a part of that. Like, is it going to have patch pockets or is it going to have welt pockets? Those could be difficult even for uh, an intermediate sewer to get uh, uh, to accomplish in a knit. So if it's just a sleek, clean, maybe you got the inset pockets, uh, not a two-piece collar, but a single collar. Uh, it could have a notch collar. That would be fine. Just watch the extra details. All right. Mary says, is a last how do you say it? Elastin. Elastane, the non-brand generic of Lycra. I believe yes. that might be true. Yes. I believe that might be true. That's why Lycra is so proprietary about their product. And they do an excellent product. That's not to say that whoever makes the Elastane isn't making just as good. But it's just like with any other brand you know this brand is spot on. Um, but yes, the answer to your question is yes. All right. So we'll be back next week. We will. There's still time to get kits. Oh, please. Don't uh, hesitate to get your kits and start getting ready. You don't have to follow along on the exact day. We will always be there for you. So if you can't get this till Saturday or the weekend after Thanksgiving or whatever it is, all of those videos are going to be there for you. And you can make a shirt now and a month from now, go back and make another one, and you still have the access to the videos once we get them in the can. All right, so we'll, again, we'll be back next week. We are going to sign off, and Janet's going to put that fabric back in stock for you. I wonder why I so many lately. <sighs> That'll do it. Thank you all for keeping us in check. Don't ever... Be afraid to ask. Yeah. Because please. as you can see, we make mistakes. Yeah. And don't follow last week's newsletter as far as the view. Look right at the pattern. The pattern cover on the website will tell you the the versions. But the C is with the hood. C is with the hood. Everybody have a great week. And we'll yeah. see you next Tuesday. Have a beautiful weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.